Dear writer, you need to quit. This is the show that helps you know what to quit, what to keep, and what to question. My name is Becca Syme, and I'm a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach with thousands of hours of coaching six- and seven-figure authors, mid-listers, major award winners, and new authors alike, because everyone needs to quit something. Anyone can tell you what worked for them, and of course, they say it might not work for you but they can't tell you why. Well, I can tell you why. Welcome to the QuickCast. Hi, and welcome to episode 26 of the QuickCast. We just hit our half year mark. We're halfway through the first year of our broadcasting, which is awesome. Today, we have the final burnout episode in the series that we've been doing, and then we're going to move on to a couple of Strengths for Writers episodes in the next two weeks. So last week, we covered the latter, which was what a lot of you wanted to know about, about how to get out of the pit of burnout. But the latter is not the end of recovery. It is the way out of the pit. It's the way to get back to normal function but it's not the end of the recovery phase. The recovery starts when you start building the ladder and climbing out, but it doesn't end until you're pretty far down the road. And today I wanna talk about what that recovery process looks like, why it takes that amount of time and how to get through that. So that once you've built the ladder and come up out of the pit, then you take that last step out back onto the road, right? And that last step off the ladder is sort of a precarious step because for some of us, it can last a while. Um, The building of the ladder and the climbing out of the pit is a lot of self-care. It's a lot of things that we have been ignoring while we were going down the slide into the pit. There are sort of two types of recovery from burnout. And one is that higher drive, maybe higher influencer type of person executor who wants to move forward and get back to work really quickly. And they have some unique challenges to the recovery part because sometimes they tend to think that they're out of the pit when they're not out yet. And so they can slide back down a few rungs at the very end, especially I I usually use percentages to talk about the length of time that it takes to get back to 100%. So if you're at 75% and you're this type of sort of high drive, push, push, push person, you can tend to want to get back to work at 100% so quickly that you don't do the work to get back that last 25%. You start to get anxious. This can be some high activators, high focus, high competition, high achiever, obviously. Um, And the execution of wanting to get back so quickly, high responsibility maybe also, Um, high restorative um, in the strengths language, those types of personality traits can tend to make you in this area. The danger of this is that the burnout can last longer or the recovery time can last longer because that last 25% is so difficult. There's a second type of person in burnout recovery, and that type is very pain averse in the sense of I don't want to go back into that pit again. And so they can almost stay in the recovery phase longer than they need to because they're so afraid of going back to 100% because it feels like it might lead them back into the pit. And usually for people like this, the pit was so difficult because it really does represent that kind of emotional um, wreckage um, for this second type of person the higher stability, maybe higher compliance, high positivity can tend towards this high futuristic, high empathy, uh, high connectedness, high relators, woo, significance, this type of person, minus the other strengths, right? But those kinds of personality traits can sometimes lead you toward being more likely to try to self-protect, right? Like the I'm afraid of of sliding back down, and so I stay too long in the not back at 100% part. And so they are putting off their real return until they feel at more than 100% 
So there's one type that wants to start at less and one type that wants to start at more. And the identification of where you fall on that continuum is very important because what we want in the burnout recovery is as much self-awareness as possible. So then the next logical question is, how do I know when I'm back at 100%, right? There are some indicators of how to tell whether you're back at 100%. And I want to talk specifically about three of them today because these are the three most important. One significant indicator is that something in the inertia wave has changed. So when you are heading along toward burnout and you start to head into the slide, remember we talked about how the inertia of your life is pushing you forward down into the pit. And unless you can deconstruct that inertia and make those expectations stop pushing you to do the things that are burning you out, you're going to end up in the pit that same inertia wave is still probably present psychologically somewhere in your brain because where the inertia comes from is either from habits or from expectations. So if you have habits that were pushing you in that direction, like for instance, you'd been publishing so fast and so often and making so much money and it had been uh, become a habit for you, publish, make money, push, don't take time off. Publish, make money, push, don't take time off. And you got so used to and, un and sometimes addicted to that reward system that that's what you're searching out. You're searching out that habit or that reward system of the pub quick publication. So if that expectation has not been deconstructed, then eventually you're going to wind up back down in the pit again. Not to say that you can't still publish quickly, not to say that you can't still write a lot or even make a lot of money. Plenty of people do that post burnout, but the way they do it is different. They readjust their expectations. So if the inertia wave has not changed yet, if you're still feeling exactly the same about the way that you uh, expect things of yourself from before you went through burnout, then you're going to end up back down there again. And that's one of the dangers of that tipping point, right? Where we talked about this last time, that last step off the ladder is really a tipping point for are you really out of burnout or are you still addicted to the cycles that got you there? And if you are, then deconstructing those cycles will be an important part of your burnout recovery. And again, I want to be super clear about this. This does not mean you can't still publish fast. It does not mean you can't still write a lot. What it does mean is you're going to have to do the self-care to make sure to adjust for the energy production. So you're not going to be able to do absolutely everything that you had been doing before you got down in there. Those of you who have bigger plate sizes, you can still run an awful lot on the margins post burnout, but you need to be super careful that you're not going outside of the margins at all, that you're really staying inside of that, um, that plate size. So the first indicator is really has the inertia wave changed? So either you reset your goals or you've released these unrealistic expectations that were leading you toward the burnout. You are no longer expecting the things that got you there. So your inertia has essentially leveled out. Otherwise, you'll keep falling back into the pit. So a second indicator is that you are much more aware of self-development and self-care. So you probably have, if you're completely out on, on the road again at 100%, you probably have integrated some kind of self-care into your life system. And you're making sure to replenish your energy on a consistent enough basis that you're not ever going to drop down below those really dangerous levels that will completely burn you out and make you fall down into the pit. So when you are out on that road, you're going to be conscious of, oh, I need to make sure to do this strength related behavior to give myself energy or I need some little wins or I need some I need to make some energy pennies. However it is that you're conceiving of it, you're aware of self-care and self-development on a way in a way that you weren't before you got down there. This is the benefit of going through an experience like burnout is that you learn the lesson that will keep you from going back there again. And that's really what we want is we don't ever want something like burnout to happen 
over and over and over and over again to us because that's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. We don't want to be insane. We want to be sane. So we want to learn our lesson. And so that's the second indicator is the self-care consciousness, even on a daily basis of have I gone to bed early enough? Do I need to shut off Facebook? Do I need to be less available? Do I need to be whatever it is, right? That's causing you to build that inertia of burnout. The third one, which is a little more nebulous, the third indicator is that you feel like something has really shifted. And this is kind of an intuitive thing. And if you're not as intuitive of a person, there are some external indicators. Um, and, and we'll talk about those in a second. But the, the intuitive internal, I feel like something has shifted. Not I want something to shift, not I want to work harder, not I want to work faster, but here are some indicators. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm feeling like I genuinely have good energy to get through my day. And that's happening day, 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 day. Like that's happening in, on a really consistent basis. Because on the ladder, on the way up, you'll have a couple of days like that. And then you'll hit a day where you just can't do anything again. It feels like you're back down in the pit. And then you'll have another couple of days, maybe three or four days where you feel really great energy and then it slides back down again. And so the, the key about this feeling of shifting is the consistency with which your energy happens without an other factor. So if you get sick, that's another factor. You could still be recovered. You're just not completely physically healed yet. If you have a stressful event happen and you don't feel like dealing with it, that's not an indication that you're not recovered. You could still be. So, but you want to look for that consistency of feeling like you have energy. You're getting up and feeling ready to attack the day. You have, or you're making plans and for some of you, they might be executed and for others, they might not. They're only meant to be felt. Uh, we talked about that in a previous episode, but you feel like there's some psych up music playing behind you. That's the easiest metaphor that I can use for it. This collective excitement to tackle something, whatever it is that drives you, you feel like that drive has returned consistently. Uh, the get psyched mix, if you've ever seen How I Met Your Mother, right? Like that's that feeling that you want to have when you're on the road. So there is one thing that will not probably happen when you are completely out of recovery. This will this may take you years and years for this particular factor to happen. It will probably never be okay that you went through burnout. You will likely feel still sad, angry, disappointed, frustrated, guilty even maybe for a long time. So why is that? Because regardless of whether your energy has returned or not, there probably are going to be consequences to the burnout. I've never seen, ever, seen someone who went through burnout where there weren't pretty major consequences. And that is because there's always something at stake that's driving us to push that inertia hard. And whatever it is that's at stake often pays the price for, for our burnout, right? You might have lost money. You might have lost a job. You might have lost your pre-order privileges. You might have lost readers, momentum, friends, trajectory. There are things that you have lost as a result of this burnout and coming up out of recovery is not going to change that particular loss. At the very least, you've lost expectations and time and that in and of itself can be a lot to deal with. Even if that's all you lost, it's still going to be hard to square with those unrealistic expectations that this should not have happened. I hate to quote the matrix because, you know, but what happened happened and couldn't have happened in any other way. It's not possible for you to have known about this unless you've been through burnout multiple, multiple times and you just keep not learning your lesson. And then we need to have a different conversation because clearly there's a lesson that you need to learn that you're not assimilating. But if you've never burned out before, you can't expect yourself to be able to understand what that feels like because it's an experience that's unlike anything else. Unless you have either major depression or chronic illness, there's nothing that feels like this. The, the visceral way that you experience that is something that you cannot replicate 
in just, well, I should have known better. Well, but should you? I mean, QTP, right? Question the premise. Are you the kind of person who tends to learn from other people's mistakes? And if you are, and you have personally witnessed someone else going through burnout, then we can maybe have a slightly different conversation, but still, you couldn't have known what happened happened and couldn't have happened in any other way. Not because there's some mystical thing making you make choices. It's because, although there might be, who knows, but it's because your life system has inertia. And in order to stop that inertia, it usually takes a major event to happen. And so the, the expectation that you should have known better is probably going to hang you up for quite a while. And the reason I talk about this is because we have to release this. I've seen people recover from burnout and take years, sometimes a decade or more, to fully assimilate that they did the best that they could do in the moment. And the only thing they can do with the situation is learn from it and not make the same mistakes again. And it continues to hold them down and hold them back that unrealistic expectation that they should have known better, or there should have been something that they could do. I understand the basic premise of this because you're trying to look for the lesson that you can learn. But in that case, learn the lesson. Don't keep feeling the feelings, feel them now release them, let them go, corner that unrealistic expectation and really get at it, the expectation that you should have been able to know better. Well, why should you? Well, I should have. Well, why? Because I've, other people have gone through this. Well, do you typically learn lessons from other people? Do you need to learn them yourself? What were your goals not important to you? Were the stakes not important to you? How could you have done this differently? And if you couldn't have, because almost 100% of the time you couldn't have, because it's not possible for you to know things that you haven't learned yet. Some of us really need to hear that. It's not possible for you to know things you haven't learned yet. And sometimes the way you have to learn them is to go through these experiences. It may not feel okay yet. It may not feel okay for a while. It may be years if you don't release the expectations. So do the work today to release the expectations. As much as we don't want to have to pay those consequences, we do. We made the choices. We have to pay the consequences. And that's hard. It's not fun. And when truth is hard, it is so important to deal with the emotions and the momentum shifts that come up around it because otherwise we're going to end up right back where we were again, right? So you had goals or hopes or strategies that got you down into that pit. There was something really exciting and fun about that. And it's also very possible that you did not get yourself into this situation, that something happened to you as a result of illness or job loss or moving or the market or the industry or someone else's decisions that made this happen. You cannot control what other people do. You can't control what happens in the world. You have to release the expectation that you somehow could have controlled that because it's just not possible. And I hate to be that blunt, but it's just not. If you really struggle with this, go read the book by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's called uh, The Four Agreements. But you have to be able to release this expectation that you can control everything and that somehow everything is within your grasp of, or within your reach. But it is really possible that someone else's choices got you here. And those are the hardest expectations to let go of. But that's why I specifically talk about unrealistic expectations in the burnout recovery episode, because these are often the things that lead us back. So we have to be willing to take a really hard look at what got us here and to resolve to not do those things again. So in the midst of all of this recovery and self-care, there also needs to be some reflection. Is it realistic for me to have these expectations? And once again, I know I bring this up every episode, but some of us are going to need some therapy about this because some of us have unrealistic expectations that are so hardwired into us because of our childhood patterning. And I know some of you don't want to hear that, but that's what's getting you back into these burnout pits consistently. Some of us really need to release these unrealistic expectations. And this is sort of the tough love episode, right? It's the episode where I have to say, like, yay, burnout recovery is so awesome. Please don't go back there again because it was awful. And we want to learn the lessons and then not make those mistakes again. 
and be able to get back to 100% and stay at 100%, do the self-care we need, take care of your energy production, take care of your inertia, monitor your unrealistic expectations, be more self-aware, be more vigilant, and then you will be more successful. This is one of the better, faster arenas that is so important because unrealistic expectations are almost always subconscious. They're almost always things that we don't even understand are happening. This is literally why I write these books. The Dear Writer, You Need to Quit and The Dear Writer, You're Doing It Wrong is to try to unpack and attack some of these unrealistic expectations so that we are more in control of our own thoughts and we're not being ruled by our subconscious choices as much. We will be always to some degree. But burnout recovery is the place where we release these unrealistic expectations. We let ourselves be who and what we are, where we are. We deal with the reality that we're facing. It is rarely fun. It's rarely fun. But it will always help us in the end because it'll help us not go back to that place, right? If you continue holding the expectation that this shouldn't have happened or that it's not fair, you'll never deal with the actual fact that it did and be able to move past it. Trust me, nothing will change what did and didn't happen. Nothing. So it's time to make peace with the past. It'll never be good that it happened, but it can be fine or it can be okay. So start there. Start with, let's get to a place where I'm going to at least accept this and stop pushing against it. Stop creating essential pain for myself, which again is going to drag me to the distraction areas. Stop pushing against it. Start accepting it. Start working with it. Learn what you can. Not accepting it won't keep you from having to pay the consequences. Okay. This has been a little bit of a tough love episode. I feel like I do these every once in a while and then I want to apologize afterwards. Like I said all these awful things, please don't hate me Um, because they are hard. And when I coach people through this recovery process, they often feel like stepping off the ladder should be the end of things and everything should be better again. And those are often the people who end up back in burnout within a year and maybe less, and some of them never really get out of burnout because they're just not willing to deal with this part of the recovery. The good news is, right, so I feel like we've done bad news for 20 minutes. The good news is once you get past that inertia issue, once you get past the unrealistic expectations, once you deal with the consequences and all of that is over, especially once the active consequence paying has stopped, then you can really head into this better place and you really will be at a better place than you were at before. Everyone that I know who's gone through burnout and fully recovered from it has a better life afterward. Sometimes you have to release some really hard expectations back down there in the dark night of the soul moment. But once you get out of it, it is so much better and you're in a transformed place. I know I talk a lot about transformation here, but there's a reason and it's because it's the most powerful process that we can go through as adults. It's the thing that will make us better faster. It's the thing that will push us towards the goals that we want to have. In the Dear Writer, You Need to Quit book, I tell the story about Eustace Clarence Scrub from the Voyage of the Don Treader, the Chronicles of Narnia about turning from it, turning from a boy into a dragon and then having to go through the transformation process to turn back into a boy again. And it was painful. It was very painful for him, but it made him such a different and better and more conscious person on the other side. And an awful lot of us are going through these experiences and we don't like them and we keep pushing at them and we try to pull the skin off ourselves instead of allowing either the situation or depending on your religious beliefs on God or on the universe to pull all of that off for you and to let the situation do the work that it's there to do. And if that might sound like a simplistic, I do have high positivity. And so I want to believe that every bad thing that happens to us can be part of our transformation and can help us to be better people in the end. And, and I believe that that attitude is important. And so if I can impart one thing only, it would be to start with acceptance. It would be to start with 
this is going to be the end, but I need to shed some skin first before I'm really going to get to that other side. So I want to thank you guys all for being here. This is the end of our burnout. I know I said we would do Q and A's, but it just, the questions were so numerous. This was going to take maybe an hour for me to get through all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Q and A video on the Patreon. If this is something that you have been really interested in this burnout, you're in the middle of burnout. I encourage you to come over to Patreon, pay the dollar, watch the video. It's going to be at least a week before it's finished. But um, so it, a week from now, um, or if you're watching this much, much later in the future, come over and search for burnout Q&A video in the Patreon posts. But I collected everything you guys sent in, everything you posted in the comments, and we're just going to go through the questions one at a time. The great thing about Patreon is you can subscribe and unsubscribe. And so if we're not giving you great content and you don't like it, you can pay the dollar, watch the video, and then be done and you can stop paying for it. So, but I do want to do the Q and A because there have been a ton of questions. It's just would take me way too long to address them all here. So we're going to, and, and we still have something like 20 strengths to get through, uh, which is a lot. Uh, we only have another 26 episodes before our year anniversary. And I was really hoping to get through all 34 strengths um, in one year. And so we may do two at a time. Uh, for the strengths videos for a while. We'll see how that goes, but we are going to return to our normal sort of rhythm over the next couple of weeks about the strengths for writers and then the QTPing. And this burnout series started off as a QTP that somebody sent in to get me to talk about. And it ended up being six parts because burnout is so complex and there's so much to it. If you are in the middle of recovery, I want to encourage you one more time, please reach out, please get some help, please ha either find a writing coach or find a therapist, find a friend to talk to, but, but find someone who can help you deal with some of those unrealistic expectations that got you down into the pit in the first place. And then let's work on being better people. Let's shed all of that skin and leave it behind us and then be those better people on the other side of this burnout experience. I know you can do it. I've seen the hardest cases in the world go through this and be better on the other side. So I know it's possible. So I hope that you will reach out and get help and do the work you need to do to not end up back in that pit again. Please hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified and make sure your notifications are on as well. So you can be notified about all the strengths that we do in the future. If you have any questions, please check out the links in the show notes. The Patreon link is in the show notes. We have the live Q and A for all the patrons coming up here pretty soon. And we're going to do that Q and A burnout video here in about a week. And so look for that on the Patreon channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope that if you are in burnout recovery, that you recover quickly. I hope that if you're in the pit, you build your ladder. I hope that if you're on the slide, that you fix your inertia and recover and get back to 100% and don't ever hit the pit at all. Take care of yourselves. This world is hard. We need good people in it. And until next week, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please comment if you have questions. I will see you on the next quick cast. Mm.